Let's take a peek at a couple of counting examples to motivate a little bit more of the intuition involved in counting. The first thing we want to do when we analyze counting problems is to understand the problem better and to try to break it down into smaller steps. So here we have that every student in a discrete mathematics class is either a computer science or a mathematics major or is a joint major in these two subjects. How many students are in the class if there are 38 computer science majors, um, including joint majors, 23 mathematics majors, including joint majors, and 7 joint majors? So let's define, first of all, we'll, we'll use the capital C to denote the students who are in the computer science class. So if I, if I look at just how many students are taking or who are computer science majors, the number of elements in that set is going to be 38. The number of mathematics majors, or thus the size of that set, there's going to be 23 people in there. And this seven joint majors, well, that means they're in both. They're simultaneously in both. So the intersection between C and M, I know to be seven. Now we can use the, this idea that we take the number of elements in one set plus the number of elements in the other set minus the number of elements in their intersection to figure out how many are in uh, there are in total and, and how many students there are in total. So these seven are going to be jointly split between C and M. So one thing I can do here to help me better visualize this is uh, create a little Venn diagram. And in this Venn diagram I will put two circles, one representing C and one representing M. So inside of here, we know that there are, in total, that the size of this set right here is going to be 38. And we know that the size of this set right here is going to be 23. But we know that inside of the intersection there's going to be seven elements. So if there are seven elements that they share in common, and we want to know how many students are strictly math majors, well 23 of them are math majors in total. Seven of them are majoring in both topics, so that means 23 minus 7, or 16 of them are enrolled only as a math major, not as a computer science major. Same thing goes over here. There are going to be 38 minus 7, 31 students who are exclusively computer science majors and not math majors. So we want to know how many students are in the class, assuming this makes up the entire universe, well, we could have really taken 31 plus 7 plus 16. And that's going to be 31 plus 7 plus 16 is 38 plus 16 is 48, 54 total students. Now, we could have also done that to say what we're really asking for is how many students are in the class? Well, the universe in this case is consisting only of the computer science majors and the math majors. This is going to be the union of M and C. So I can write M union C. And because of that, I, what I really am asking is, what is the size of the universe? Which is equivalent to asking, what is the size of the union of these two sets? Well, that's going to be 54, but in terms of the, the set M, I could take the size of the set M, add the size of set C to that, but I'm going to be double counting. The 38 plus 23, both of those numbers include the 7 that are in both classes. So I would have to subtract away the size of their intersection because that is going to be included in there twice. And so if I did 38 plus 23 minus 7, then I should end up getting the same answer. It's going to be 61 minus 7, which is 54, which gives me the same answer. So we're working with sets, we're working with sizes of sets, but the important part is to, first of all, make some sort of either visual sense of it or have a better comprehension of what the problem's asking. In the second example, how many different initials can someone have if a person has at least two, but no more than five different initials? So this is one of those situations where we're going to have to consider a bunch of different cases. So the first case is a person has two initials. And to have two initials, 
that each initial is going to be one of the 26 uppercase letters in the English alphabet, the number of ways you could do that is, well, there are 26 possibilities for that first initial. Um, each of those 26 is going to be paired with 20, one of 26 other possibilities. So this is going to be 26 squared, whatever that comes out to. The second possibility is to have three initials. And the three initials can be 26 for the first, 26 for the second, 26 for the third. So that'll give me 26 to the third different three initial combinations. Three will give me, this, uh, step three is to consider people who have four initials. And that's going to be 26 to the fourth. So let's move that over here. 26 to the fourth possibilities. And four would be five initials. And there are 26 to the fifth possibilities. So to, to figure out how many total there are, in this case, we know that you can't simultaneously have two initials and three initials. So these two situations are considered disjoint. In fact, all of these are disjoint, disjoint sets. So the set of all situations that have two initials, so we'll just say I sub two, will be the set of all pairings of a first letter and a second letter. So A, 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 B, and so on. And there will be 26 squared possibilities in there. I3 would be the 26 to the third possibilities. And so uh, I'll just write I3 equals, this will be A, 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 and all the different possibilities in there. And so we know what I4 and I5 are going to look like. So to calculate the size of I2 unioned with I3, why is it the union? Well, it's because we want to take all the items that are all the two initial abbreviations and all the three initial abbreviations, and we want to total them all together. There's not going to be any overlap here between these two sets. Uh, again, because you can't have two and three initials, it's one or the other. We could have union that with I4, we could union that with I5. And when we do that, that's just going to be the size of I2 plus the size of I3 plus the size of I4 plus the size of I5. We don't need to subtract off any intersections because, once again, we're dealing with non-overlapping sets. So this will be 26 squared plus 26 cubed plus 26 to the fourth plus 26 to the fifth. And so when we're, when we're counting things, we really just want to assess, is it possible that uh, one element could be shared between two different sets? If the answer is yes, then we do need to subtract away intersections. If the answer is no, then we don't need to worry about it.